You all know that I am a hip hop maven, probably the pop culture voice of our generation. And there's a new song out that I really wanted to listen to, watch for the first time, and review in real time. The song is by an artist named Tom McDonald. You might be familiar with him. I, I realized now I've reviewed six of his songs. Fake Woke, In God We Trust, Brainwash, New World Order, Snowflakes, and America. And Tom has been insanely popular, but the gatekeepers who control the lists and the charts and all that kind of stuff, they try to suppress it, which I'll get to a little bit later. But he's got a new song out. It's called Names. It, it, it just came out. It's got 2.3 million views in just the first few days. And I thought, you know, I've done so many of these songs and I assume I am 100% correct in my interpretation of every single moment. But just, just in case, just to maybe add a little bit of color here, I figured it was time we brought on Tom himself. Tom, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, man. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to gut check me here a little bit. You know, if I go off the rails a little, if I'm misinterpreting something, I, I think that for, the, for the seventh song, you know, that's a, that's a great, that's a perfect number. I, I, I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. So without further ado, let's play names. They gon' try to call you names, label you with things till you're ashamed. You're a sexist or a racist, white supremacist or gay. They'll attack your reputation, claim that you're the one to blame, and try to make you hate yourself for ways that you behave. They're just names. Embrace them and they'll never cause you pain. They're just words that another person thought up in their brain. They're just names. They do not define you, that's insane, and they'll just call you something different if you change. Call me racist, I don't make no BLM donations I can stand with black folks without a branded corporation All this systemic prejudice if yeah, you live in this So two things I want to get to there the, I'll get to the second one first you, you tie BLM to corporations And I love that because the way that BLM presents itself It's that it's the counterculture It's just the natural voice of the people speaking up against institutionalized power. But then when you look at it for two seconds, you realize, wait a second, all the most powerful institutions in the country, especially the corporations, they're the ones bankrolling BLM. I think distorting, like the line says, I can stand with black folks without donating to a branded, to a, to a, to a, to a corporation. Um, and I, and I think that for, you know, I think it started off innocent enough and it had sort of like a, uh, a, a sentiment behind it that, that a lot of people sort of co-signed at the time. And the further down that road we got, the more pressure there was to go to a protest, donate money, do this, do that, put this on your Instagram. And if you don't do these things, then you're a racist. Yeah. And it's just, it, it got, you know, it's just, look, I don't have to donate to, to BLM. And I think that a lot of the people that have donated to BLM now we're, two years removed from its inception, probably regret the fact that they did um, with all of the things that have sort of come out about that movement uh, over the past couple of years. So, you know, so uh, that one to me is like pretty self-explanatory. I, I, I can stand with black folks. I can stand with, with, uh, with people who feel like they're marginalized without, um, without fueling a, a corporate machine. You know? and, and frankly, the more you fuel the corporate machine, probably the less you're standing with people who would say are, call themselves marginalized or oppressed or something like that. I mean, you look, BLM raised, what, $90 million? How much of that money went to George Floyd's intimates? How much money of that went to people who were well, there were a lot of George Floyd family members who came out of the woodwork. He probably never even met them. There were a lot of uh, race hustlers and professional politicians and activists who made a lot of money. Patrice Cullors bought a lot of nice houses in California with that money. But how much of that money actually went to the marginalized and the oppressed? Uh, not, a, not a red cent of it, not at all. And I really like that, that first line of the song, too. You, you say, look, there are all these names that people throw at us. And you use all the names that they throw at the right wingers. Homophobic, racist, this phobic, this phobic. But then and you say, or gay. And I like that too, because gay is a line that, well, it's not even really partisan. It's just the sort of thing you call someone when you're in third grade. You're like, oh man, you're so gay. That's so dumb. That's so stupid. And so that's one that it kind of cuts against the idea that you're just putting out right-wing propaganda. Uh, well, absolutely. That was the point. That was the point. And I, and I also knew like, 
uh, I knew what I was asking for by doing that too, because there was a lot of people who stood up and said like, uh, you're homophobic because you said gay, uh, in the context of all of these other horrible names that you used. And to me, it's just like the whole point of using that word where I used it just went so far over so many people's heads. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so, uh, obsessed with having something to be angry about that instead of for two seconds sitting back for a minute and being like, okay, why, why did he use that word there? Instead of a having the, the conversation or asking the question, it's just immediate attack, attack, attack. People calling me homophobic, which is essentially what the song's about, the names that people call you. So it's right. just, yeah. I had a debate once with, uh, not, not that long ago with a friend of mine, uh, who is definitely a little bit light in the loafers, you know, he's not exactly into the chicks. And uh, we sure. were having this whole discussion about whether or not science is fake and gay. And it, it occurred to me, you know, someone would probably come in if they overheard that conversation and say, you're, you guys are homophobic. And, you know, it would be, of course, up to their ignorance that uh, this guy is, uh, he's the first part of that word. It's not, you know, not the, there's no <laughs> phobia going on at all. Okay, let's keep going. If you live in this nation, you privileged, black or Caucasian Call me transphobic, but I support you in your policies I just can't ignore the very basics of biology All I see is men and women trying to live in harmony Not a hundred genders that you want to be Call me snowflake, cause I'm offended, I ain't stone-faced Social justice warriors destroying us with woke ways Mad because they voted for the POTUS with the most hate <laughs> Man, I miss the old days Call me loser, call me bigot, call me stupid, call me bitter, call me ugly, call me cracker, call me doucher, call me trigger. You can call me what you want, cause at the end of the day, man, they're just names. Go ahead and call us names, dog. Let's put a pause there. The, the, the transgender aspect to this, I think, is really interesting because the whole thesis of the song is it really doesn't matter what you call me. I know that those things aren't fair or true. And so whatever, call me whatever you want. I'm rubber, you are glue. <laughs> you know, it bounces off of me and it's no big deal. But I think it was a little more poetic than that. Though, it right? was a little more poet. Yeah, it's, it was like when George W. Bush, he said, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice. Uh, the point is you're not going <laughs> to fool me again. But, you know, the, but it, the, the flip side of the names issue is obviously transgenderism because the, the transgender debate is all about names, whether or not I am forced to call a dude who thinks he's a woman, she and her, and use some fake woman's name instead of his actual name. The, the flip side of this is that the transgender argument says, if you do not call me the names that I demand that you call me, if you do not constantly affirm whatever delusion I've got, you are destroying my existence. You might as well kill me. That the na the names you call me are the most important things in my life. And you think, well, you're you've just flipped it 180 degrees from from reality, from the I am rubber and you are glue. Right. So yeah, that's that's pretty much that that line in the song that was uh, uh, call me transphobic. Um, I support you in your policies. I just can't ignore the very basics of biology. Like to me, like that whole thing is just that. Like I don't have any problem uh with trans people or people that want to define their their own genders and live in that world and do that whole thing it's just at some point along the way here i have to draw the line somewhere and say hey like here is where i stopped participating yeah. in this charade that you guys are like i like it, it it inevitably it comes to an end somewhere yeah. So for me, that's like, if you want to go do that over there and go do your thing, fine. I'm going to, I'm going to do my thing over here. I'm not going to interfere with you guys. Don't interfere with me. Don't force me to, when you start saying things like if you misgender somebody, it's a crime. <laughs> it's against the law to misgender somebody or words are actual violence. When you start saying things like this, that's a slippery slope, man. Like you're going to end up in a real gnarly situation when, 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 when misgendering somebody becomes a crime. Right. Like, and I, ironic, of course, because the only people misgendering anyone are the, are the people <laughs> who want, they want us to call the men the women and vice versa. Right. So, right. right. That, then things do get very gnarly. All right. Keep going. Try 
try to call you names Label you with things till you're ashamed Repeat it till you really start believing what they say They gon' stamp it on your forehead and scream it till you break They love to say they woke, they not awake They're just names, afraid of anyone who ain't the same So they classify your thoughts as controversial, not okay Then they cancel you till everything you have all gets erased They tryna tell the world you bad, they're just names Call me conservative or liberal Let's pause it right there So I, I love that line you know, say whatever you want. I just hope you find the Lord. You know, I'm, I'm getting bored of this, but I, I, I really love that. And I wonder, I don't even know if this was a conscious choice, but that little line in there then brought up this image for me when, when you get to that next verse where you say, look, they're going to call you names and they're going to cancel you and they're going to come after you and they're going to try to destroy your life and they're really going to, they're really, really going to hit you. It, it, it actually, this is going to sound like I'm being hyperbolic here or, or, or making a stretch, but, but go with me. It sounded, it, it, it brought up this image to me of the trial of Christ. It brought up this image to me of the passion of Christ where he goes, he's brought up on trial and they say, they accuse you of this. They say you're a blasphemer. They say you did this and you said this and you do this and you just, and Jesus just remains silent during all of that. And when people ask him direct questions, did you, are you the king of the Jews? He says, well, you say that I am. That's what you say. I don't, you know, you tell me, you're the one who says it. And it, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the timing of those two lyrics seems, uh, it, it, if it wasn't intentional, it certainly works. Well, yeah, I can tell you for sure that, um, uh, the, t the timing of the, the video versus the lyrics wasn't intentional, but to me, the o overall, uh, throughout the whole video, I think sort of what you're explaining, um, I was crucified on that billboard. Uh, to me, like all of those billboard scenes, those were like very biblical and were, su were supposed to be a reference to sort of um, uh, to Jesus. You're crucified on this billboard. There's all these names written up on the billboard that people say that you are. All the arrows are pointing at you. And... To me, it's just the, the whole sort of sentiment of the song is like, okay, if if you say I am, then then fine. Yeah, but you say whatever you say. You you can't right. No, there's a there's a line in I think it's the memoirs of Frederick Douglass where he he describes being uh, insulted and degraded and all you know all of these terrible lines are thrown at him. And he says, you're actually not degrading me. You, you can't degrade me by calling me names and telling me to go different places. And you just don't have the power to do that. I can degrade myself in how I react to you, but you just throwing all that bile at me, you can't take away my dignity. Absolutely. And I think that there's definitely something to be said for, um, you can take all of the ridicule and uh, humiliation and embarrassment and anger and frustration. And you can take all of these things that people throw at you in life, especially in the, the, the last few years. Um, I, I feel like you can take all that stuff and you, and you can turn it to power. Um, you can use that stuff as fuel. Um, and I think that when you have the opportunity to put those types of things in a music video, it's almost like holding up a giant mirror and all of those people that are calling you those names and throwing that hatred and um, just spewing that sort of like rhetoric at you. I feel like they have to like look in the mirror when they see it uh, in visual form in a music mm -hmm. video. I, I think it causes a lot of like sort of self-examination from these people. And I mean, I, if one of those people sees that music video and thinks, oh my God, he's right. I, I've been being an asshole. I feel like that's accomplished. <laughs> right, of course. And, and the, the uh, crucifixion imagery is, is really apt because there is this Christian idea that suffer. It's at least a Catholic idea. And in particular, the Catholics have this, uh, this sense that suffering is sanctifying that suffering, or at least it can be sanctifying, that when people are doing all sorts of terrible things to you and they're inconveniencing you and they're calling you names and they're attacking you, that we should kiss it up to God, that you, you kind of take that on you. It binds you in a way to, to Christ. And you say, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not going to whine and scream and I'm not going to debase myself. You, you call me all those things. Okay, you said it. 
You said it. What can I say? I'm not, I'm not going to degrade myself here. Let's keep going. Me conservative or liberal, Republican or Democrat. I'm somewhere in the middle, but y'all don't know what to do with that. The system got you so obsessed with classifying right or left. You never call a person human, call them names instead. Call me sexist. I love Men that. Pause that here. So now you're addressing something that I know there's been a lot written about you when it comes to your politics. Are you right wing? Are you left wing? Are you, you, you certainly kind of look you look in some ways a little more left wing. You know, you got you got some tattoos. You got uh, you know, you're not wearing a Brooks Brothers suit and an ill-fitting tie or something like that. Uh, but in some ways, you also look more right wing. You don't look like some shrimpy kind of you know hipster at a cafe eating a, a avocado toast or something like that. So I, I, even when you look at you, you say I don't know if you're left or right. And then uh, the libs have accused you of basically just grifting and saying that you're just going to make a quick buck by by sounding right wing. But the libs also attack you constantly for your songs. So I don't know. They're not exactly straight on their story. So what is it? You say in the video, I'm not exactly left. I'm not exactly right. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a. So what is it? Yeah. Um. I feel like I'm definitely. Uh, I like to consider myself a free thinker, and I think that 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 more often than not, um, that causes me to land slightly right of center. Uh, to be completely honest, I think that the people on the right side of the spectrum, um, I think they have sort of the best idea of what's going on in the world right now. Uh, I think they have sort of the best ideas on how to move forward to make things better. Um, and I think that's probably a big part of the reason why they've been beaten down and humiliated and canceled and silenced and censored and bullied uh, by the, the, the left wing media. And to me, it's like I grew up I grew up as a loner my whole life. Uh, I hung up on myself. I was always kind of like a weird kid and I was a skateboarder and got piercings and got tattoos and and and, you know, I was the underdog as a kid. Hmm. And, and, and you think that like uh, when you're bullied as a kid, oh, well, one day I'm going to grow up and nobody's going to bully me anymore. And then you grow up and the bullies get bigger <laughs> and meet louder and more intense. And to hmm. me, that is the liberal media and the left side of the spectrum right now. So. I tend to stand a little right of center with the people who are getting bullied because I identify with that. Hmm. They're, they're, they're just unpopular opinions are as valuable, if not more valuable than whatever the mainstream narrative is at the time. Right. Um, right. So, well, so I love it actually, it kind of gets back to the religious imagery in the, in the music video, which is, uh, you know, sometimes people will complain. They'll write into the show and they'll say, Michael, I just want to speak the truth, but people keep attacking me for speaking the truth. I say, uh-huh. Yeah. What, uh, do you remember what they did to Socrates? Uh, remember what they did to our Lord and Savior, who is the truth himself? Remember what they did to uh, pretty much everyone who's ever <laughs> spoken the truth uh, ever in all of human history? Like, if that's not the, the age old story of good versus evil, man, like, you yeah. know, <laughs> You, 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 when, you, when you try to do something good, when you try to do something righteous, uh, when you try to do something pure, that's when the demons and the evil and the badness come out of the woodwork. It's just the way that it is. Yep. Yeah, that's true. You can you can count on that. All right, let's keep going. Call me sexist. Men run the world because they're aggressive. But behind every man, there's a woman just as successful. We will never be equal in every way that ain't helpful. Our differences are why we're great together. Call me white devil. I know you think the system favors me. My privilege is residual benefits from the slavery. Subconscious prejudice embedded in the system made for me. Don't mean I never struggled to survive. I guess we ain't agree. Ignorant and jaded. Call me dumb, uneducated. Call me idiot or redneck or delusion. No look crazy. Call me anything society has taught you to say. Cause at the end of the day, they're just names. Go ahead and call us names. Sticks and your stone 
might break my bones, but your words don't hurt. So give me your words. Stupid loser, ugly poser, moron, liar, crazy loner. Go ahead and call his name. Let's pause right there. I really like that the stupid loser poser, all that, because it opens up with racist, sexist, homophobic, all these words that actually are thrown at people in their adult lives. And uh, you, you tie it in or later on in the it, song with the, the kind of the same taunts that you get when you're in second grade. And, uh, and, and there's no difference. I mean, the, you say the, the bullies don't go away. They only get bigger. They give you a swirly when you're in second grade, and then they try to kill your job and, and you know, kick you out of school or your place of employment when you get older. And it, it's just as mean-spirited. It's really more mean-spirited. I mean, there's nothing worse that you can be called in today's society than racist. So, okay, you're going to do that. You're going to come at me. Fine, just call me a big, dumb, ugly loser like you, like you would do in second grade, and, and at least be honest about it. Totally. Well, that well, that was sort of the, uh, you know, and we start we started off that bridge section with your sticks and your stones, which is sort of like the I'm rubber, your glue thing. Yeah. So it, it, it starts off with this very like adult, grown up version of like what these bullies are, and over the course of the three minutes, it sort of degenerates into you loser, ugly, stupid, moron. Like it sort of degenerates. And yeah. to me though, that's the, that's the whole thing unraveling and falling apart and destroying itself from within until you're left with nothing but second grade insults that yeah. we've all heard before, you know? That's right. And that actually do bounce off of me and stick to you when you jerks th <laughs> throw them at me. Absolutely. All right, let's keep going. Go ahead and call us Pause right there. I just love that the guy that's calling you those names just is the guy I described in the coffee shop with the avocado toast. <laughs> I didn't know that. I haven't seen the video yet, but that's really, that's really excellent. That's artistry. Okay, keep going. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. I re so b before I let you go, Tom, this is very, this is very cool. It's very trippy to review a song in front of the artist, because if that song had been terrible, it would be very awkward for me. You know, I'd have to, I, cause I don't, I can't lie. I'd have to be, I'd have to try to be polite. Like, oh, I really like the costumes, you know, and the, <laughs> but really anyway. Because like I said, Michael, I'm a, I'm a big fan of what you do. So this oh, would have, this could have been heartbreaking for me. <laughs> super awkward for you. Yeah. It just, it just ends up being a 10 minute video. I'm like, uh, oh, well, anyway. <laughs> so before I let you go though, Tom, I, I, I do want to get to the sales numbers because you're, I know that your songs have been extremely popular. I have been stopped in bars. I'm not kidding. I've been stopped in bars around the country. And people will come up to me, they say, Michael, so nice to meet you. And I think, oh, great. They're going to talk about how much they love my show. They're going to say maybe they love my books or something like that. And they say, Michael, I'm not joking. This actually happened to me. I said, Michael, uh, Tom McDonald has a new song out. When are you going to review that? That's my favorite content on your channel. So when are you guys? So like, I'm, what am I, uh, Tom McDonald's <laughs> publicist over here? I got, but so I, I know your stuff is very, very popular. The people who put the charts together, I notice they sometimes leave your name off of them. What's that about? Dude, uh, there, there's been a plethora of different ways that we've sort of uh, butted heads with, with the music industry and, and their reporting systems and giving us the credit we deserve. So, you know, it's happened in a variety of different ways. We, uh, uh, we had a, a video trending at like number five or something on YouTube uh, a few months ago. So if you went to my actual video on YouTube, underneath the video, it says trending at number five. And then you go over to the trending charts and the charts go <laughs> one, two, three, four, six. Like five has been completely omitted from the mm -hmm. charts. Um, and I just released a, a collaboration album a few months ago with Adam Calhoun where um, 
we did like 45,000 units or something. Um, and, and uh, that was, that, that was physical copies and the reporting system refused to count our physical sales, which would have essentially like locked us in at the number one spot on the albums charts. And we went back and forth with these people for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And we're like, we were at the point where we were like begging them, what can we do for you guys? I just don't we get it be- because it's, it, it seems to me, look, I don't, uh, what do I know about selling musical albums? But it seems to me it would be much harder to sell physical albums than it would be to sell a digital download. And so you're, you're selling the physical units and what, they just, they just don't believe you? They think you're lying or something? Yeah, and it, it got to the point where this is unprecedented and uh, extremely dangerous uh, for me to do, but I offered them a username and a password so that they could sign in to the back end of my commerce wow. and buy all of the units sold themselves, and they wouldn't do it. Wow. And we figure out why. So, but that's just, that's just, you know, the nature of the entertainment industry, man. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, incredibly, uh, it's an incredibly woke sector of, of music is an incredibly woke sector of the entertainment business. And, um, and I I don't, I don't fit the, the mold. They want, uh, they want Britney Spears. They don't want Dennis Rodman. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I guess that's probably true. I also, now that you've made that comparison, I can't unsee it. I had never made that comparison before. So that's really frustrating, but it is to be expected. They, the New York Times did a similar thing when my book came out uh, last year, Speechless. We sold, and it's even, it's much easier to track uh, these things in, in book sales. And we sold 40% over the number one New York Times bestseller that week, and the sales continued for in the following weeks. We sold, I think, an order of magnitude more sale or more copies than people lower down on the list. They wouldn't put it on the list anywhere. And they're protected from that because, and they've said this in court, their bestseller list is editorial content. So if they don't like a book, or I assume the same principle holds if someone doesn't like a movie or a, a, a movie show or a TV show or or a song or an album, they can just keep it off of the list. And we were lucky that Publishers Weekly publishes a a list that accurately reflects sales. So they put us at the top of that one. But the the cartels that that are the gatekeepers to this kind of cultural content, they they don't want you to be getting the numbers that you are getting. And you're getting them anyway, and it makes it all sweeter. So now, Tom, for the, for the handful of people maybe who don't already subscribe to your stuff, where can they find you? Uh, so on Instagram, I'm Hangover Gang. Uh, on YouTube, it's youtube.com slash Tom McDonald Official. Facebook.com slash Tom McDonald Official. Twitter uh, slash I am Tom McDonald. If you just search, put my name in uh, on any of these platforms, you'll find me and hundreds of thousands of people talking shit about me. I'm really easy to find on the internet. So. <laughs> That's great. Absolutely. So you can uh, head on over there, subscribe. Next, I'm going to start working on my rapping abilities so that I can someday audition to be in one of these songs. Because that would be really trippy for me to review the song with me, you know, in it. I have I have to say I'm not the most fluent rapper yet. But if I keep listening, if we keep doing these reviews, maybe I'll maybe I'll be able to uh, improve a little bit in the future. So uh, are you are you? Planting the seed right now for, for, for Tom McDonald featuring Michael Knowles. I am, listen, I have very few specific career goals left, you know, that I really, oh, I, generally I just kind of, I just kind of go with the flow, man, you know, I kind of see where politics, but this one, this is up there, it is on the chart, so we'll see, we'll see where it goes, you know, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll. <laughs> Tom, absolutely fabulous. Well, for, fabulous to really meet you for the for the first time. Actually, talking beyond just you know a DM here or there, and uh, really great stuff. Keep it up. Keep pissing off all of the right people. It's a real joy to watch them sputter and pull their hair out and rend their garments and gnash their teeth. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, man. It was a total pleasure. 